These are devotions for people at a social distance. This morning, I was uh, in my devotions reading in Acts chapter 17, Paul hanging out in Athens, which has long been a passage that has filled my imagination. I, I remember I used to love the ancient idea of the city of Athens and, uh, you know, the the incredible philosophers who hung out in the Agora, the incredible things that happened there. And to see, you know, this hero of Christianity, Paul, walking the streets of Athens and engaging, you know, those very people, the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers for which the city was famous, is just this incredibly fun passage to read. I, I just love to come back to it. And I think it's one that we should continue to come back to because Paul invites us to think very creatively about, about God and how we relate to God. He proclaims, so, so Paul speaks before the Areopagus, uh, the meeting of, of you know, inquiring minds in Athens, and he says, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is the Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything since he himself gives all mortals life and breath and all things. And that, my friends, is a passage that we just need to keep coming back to every time, every time somebody says, oh, we need to, to speak up for God, we need to protect God. Um, <laughs> you know, God uh, is quite capable of taking care of God's self. We don't need to serve God. God does not need our protection. And we can allow people the freedom to speculate, to think about God, even if that leads them into strange directions, because we do not need to protect God against humanity. God is quite capable. So, you know, that's one passage, one verse that I would continually come back to. But also, um, he goes on to say that God created uh, us as human beings so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. What a powerful idea. Not only that we were created to seek for God, and I think, I do believe, yes, uh, religion is not what it once was, but that groping, that seeking for God continues to be a distinctive part of humanity. And um, one of the reasons, honestly, one of the reasons why I believe that the church, you know, that, uh, that I serve, that, that I continue to want to do is because I think that we need some people who are going to uh, look with respect and honor at others and to live out the Christian faith um, so that uh, it's an alternative to those who would abuse the power of faith and religion to lead others astray. So we need to live uh, with integrity as Christians uh, to provide that alternative. We need to uh, show that there's a way to have an authentic, respectful of others kind of faith uh, so that people don't think that the only kind of uh, you know, Christian faith there is, is is the kind where, you know, you can be radically nationalistic or where you can uh, hate on other people who are not Christians. Uh, that's not Christianity for me. I want to provide an alternative to that. And, you know, if we all have this desire to, to grope, to search for God, to grope for him, which means that we fumble around when we make mistakes, it means we're not always going to get it right, then we need to um, respect the groping and the, fum the fumbling of others as they maybe, you know, explore and find uh, different ways of relating to God that we might have some trouble with, we might not agree with, and yet we need to respect what they are doing you know, so long as it's not causing a danger to others, of course, uh, because this is something that God wants us to do, to search for God, to grope for God. So we need to respect others, even of other, oh, those of others' faith in, in their searching, seeking and their groping for God. Um, and we need to have all kinds of humility, you know, to say, no, <laughs> we haven't got it all figured out. We haven't, you know, if you think you've got God figured out, you are wrong. You know, we are all wrong if we think we've got all the answers, whether it has to do with God, whether it has to do with the ultimate destiny of anything. Uh, at best, we are groping about and we're getting a lot of it wrong. And so we need to look at humility with our own faith, at our own faith, and we need to, need to look with respect, with respect at those others. 
because and 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 then he goes on to say for in him we live and move and have our being and he says that that's actually a quote from a greek philosopher a greek poet um because he recognizes that that you know other people other people seeking and groping after god is something that we can actually all learn from so i would indeed continue to return to this passage in acts chapter 17 as i think about what it means to believe in god to serve serve god to love god in this world where there is a diversity of religions uh, where yes uh, we don't need to apologize for the things that we believe and yet we still need to look with humility at our own beliefs, and we need to look with respect at those who, in their groping around, have come to different ideas about God and God, who God is. Thank you, God, for what you've built into us, this desire, this groping for you. And yes, we confess that, that we don't get it right. We don't have you figured out. And if we think we have, then we are truly... Uh, making a, a deep, deep mistake. Help us to live according to our faith with all humility, especially as we look at others and as we respect their faith journeys. Amen.